We have some parts to make. Naturally, these parts need to ship tomorrow, but I'm gonna be gone all day tomorrow, which means they need to ship today. And these parts are some of the smallest parts I've ever made coming out of an exotic material with the smallest threads that I've ever had to make. So yeah, we're in classic Audacity micro territory here. In my last video, I finished setting up my new Aroa zero point system on this machine. I got all the offsets dialed in and then I immediately had to remove everything from the table for a big set of parts. So I'm starting from scratch. So step one is to get at least this one back on the table. I think we can leave this one here for later, but if we get the vertical system back on the table, that'll be enough for today. Oh, and this is our material. This is a piece of Maycore, quarter inch in diameter, three inches long. I do have a backup piece if I need it. We need to make 10 parts. The 10 parts, if everything goes right, should be about, oh, that much of the material. And no, it is not chalk. And this here is the teeny tiny little tap that we have to use to tap a hole in each of these parts. It's small. All right, that wasn't too bad. I have it more or less set up here. I didn't use my indicator to really dial anything in. It doesn't matter for this first part because we're just gonna be going off of the center of this thing and the material's round. So it could be rotated a little bit and it'll be fine. We'll just probe for the center of that pallet. Uh, this one I just have in place. I haven't plumbed it up at all, but I wanted to kind of sort out where everything was gonna go. And then this is the J-Spec anchor point. This is actually an early prototype version it's a pretty cool little pallet system. We'll probably talk about it more later, but it uses BT-30 pole studs and apparently some grease. This was a, a beta test unit. Uh, the new ones look really, really nice, but we'll talk about that more later. I need to get my material in here. I need to probe things. That's pretty much where I'm at. I wanna use as minimal possible force. My torque wrench doesn't even go low enough, so I'm just gonna gently hand tighten that and don't over tighten it because I don't want to lose this stick of material. Um, now that I've done that, I'm actually going to remove it from here so I don't accidentally bonk it while setting some tools. I will be cutting these parts with tool number 120 out of the Subtract standard library. It is a eighth inch flat three flute, uh, standard length non-ferrous. You don't need anything special to cut Maycore. It's not a particularly hard ceramic. It's not as abrasive as others may be. You don't need diamond tools or anything. Regular tools will work just fine. Coated is better than uncoated, but I'm not removing much material and I just want something super sharp. So I'm going with this uncoated three flute. This one I do need to measure, so move and set length. And since I've used this tool in the past, it already knows eighth inch flat three flute, flute standard length non-ferrous, and it'll do our measurement here. There we go. When I last put this in, I didn't have the tag system in place yet, but I do now, and I won't have to re-measure it uh, again. As long as I don't break the tool, I'll just take it out and put it in my tool rack. This one is Subtract Tool 632, which is a 0.6 millimeter drill. Yeah. Which you really don't want to break with the tightening tool. In the machine it goes. And in the tag goes. There's our tap. And our saw we already had set up. So I just need to hit store current tool and put it in an open slot. I believe that's all the tools. Part goes back in. So let's pull up the probe. Pull up the probe, yes. I'm not gonna bother setting up my permanent offsets for the zero point again. I'm just gonna go G54 and probe for top center. There is a convenient button for find center. And now it will find the center. Let's do it one more time. Just to confirm it didn't move at all. It only moves by two tenths and that is approximately the diameter I measured before with calipers. So we should be good. Uh, I guess we do need to do our Z now. Cool. I do try to record things with compressed air instead of coolant as much as I can, but I do want to keep the dust in the coolant where it can get filtered out and not on the machine. So door closed with coolant is unfortunately the way.
And right there is an empty stick. Our part is no longer with us. It's somewhere, but it's no longer with us. Raise your hand if you're surprised. Yeah, I didn't think so. I kind of suspected this was going to happen. In fact, it was all but guaranteed, but a guy can hope. There should have been a little bit of meat left for a tab. It was a round tab that was going to be slightly wider than the hole that we drilled in here. And I was hoping it would just be sitting there when it's done. So I have two different thought processes. One, I turn off coolant with the saw, at least at the very last where it's about to break through so the part doesn't go flying or get washed away. Uh, thought number two is I can leave more meat on here for when it's doing that part in operation. So either one of those will hopefully fix it. I guess we should probably only change one at a time. Uh, coolant. I'm going to start by turning off coolant. No code changes. We'll, we'll do some variable isolation here and try running this one more time. Man, the part could easily be like sitting right there and we would never ever find it. I did design this program to start off with a probing operation. So... I don't need to change my work coordinate system at all. Well, before running it, this probing operation will find the material and then just pick up where it left off and run another one. And that stick is sticking out far enough that I can run, I don't know, at least five or six of these before having to stick it out anymore. So we'll do coolant up until the saw. Then we'll turn it off for the saw. And we're to the cutoff. And the part is no longer with us. All right, we're gonna try basically the same thing, except this time I'm leaving some stock to leave around that bore. And I'm doing that cutoff instead of in a bunch of passes in one pass. So that should leave more material supporting the part up until the last minute. Or that's my hope. Uh, let's try again. A little bit more successful this time. We have a part there. And there it is in my hand. Not that you can see it. So there's the part. Here it is under magnification. Uh, ignore the little fiber there. But it doesn't look awful from this angle. However, if we rotate it a little bit, and I get it sitting on its edge. There we go. <laughs> you can see uh, a pretty bad burr. So that's the flip side of that stock to leave around the, the hole. That little tab was too big this time because that'll be really hard to remove. But we're making progress. Well, I dropped it and look where it landed. It's on the fillet on this bench. That part was almost gone forever. Come back, buddy. Okay. Our measurements here aren't looking bad, though. Our nominal is 0552. So we're one-tenth undersized, which is in spec. After we remove that burr, our thickness is 0 0.0287. That is 13 tenths undersized. Should be 0 0.030 on the dot. This is actually out of spec by three tenths. I said I removed that burr, and it actually wasn't that difficult. It was just kind of a matter of rolling it between my fingers, and it came off. So I can't get it back up on its side here. Oh, this part's so small. Come on, go to your side. Get to your side. There we go. Uh, no, I thought I had it. There we are. See, so it's nice and flat. So I kind of rolled it between my fingers, then hit it on a Sarah stone. And that seems to have done it. So it may have been less of a burr than I thought it was. So other than the thickness, I think we actually somehow ended up with a good part out of that. I'm gonna adjust the offset, the tool length offset on this slitting saw, the one that does the parting. That's what determines the thickness of the thing and see if we can get that dialed into nominal. And I'm gonna cut back the size of that, the tab, I guess you would call it just a little bit more to make that even easier to remove. Maybe we can find some happy medium where the burr stays on the stock and doesn't stay on the part. Um, while also the part stays on the stock. 
that makes sense. That's what we're going for, happy medium. So I'm gonna run some tests and see how close we can get it. At this point, my microphone died or something and we lost audio, so I'm gonna go to voiceover for the next couple clips. You can say what you want about the accuracy at Tormox. I know they don't have the best reputation for being a particularly precise machine, but the new 1500, I think, fixes a lot of the issues that they used to have. And by just tweaking that tool length, I was able to get a part that measures pretty much dead nominal. Let me prove that it wasn't a trick with my micrometer. Oh, okay, it moved by 50 millionths. I guess we can accept that. So 50 millionths undersized. I think that'll still do. Well, thank you everybody for watching. These parts ended up being really not that bad to make. It's a great example of a bread and butter Audacity micro part where most shops would never even try making these. They would look at the design and go, eh, those are impossible or those are too difficult. Um, but the materials are relatively cheap and because I've done stuff like this before, I kind of know how to tackle them and I'm able to make a really good rate with stuff just like this. So that's the power of being able to niche down into something that you're good at and nobody else wants to do. Now on that note, if you go too niche, you do end up missing out on some work that's just kind of outside of your area of expertise. It's always gonna be a trade-off with going niche. That's why I started Subtract Manufacturing. Subtract Manufacturing is a collective of small machine shops that are each able to work in their niche because we're part of a bigger network. So if I get a large part, I can pass it off to Subtract and somebody who has the, the skill and the experience and the equipment to handle that large part can take the large part while I can focus on the small stuff. So if you have any parts that you need made, whether they're big, whether they're small, whether they're complex or they're simple, go to subtractmanufacturing.com and we'll get you a quote within an hour or two. Right now, me and someone working with me named Jacob are handling all of the quoting. And if the part's right for my shop, I'll make it. If it's not right for my shop, somebody else will make it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.